one of my favorite tools, the lowly servo tester. I have figured there are six useful purposes for this. If you know of another one, leave a comment below. Love to hear about it. I'm going to go through all six of the items that I think I mean, you can't live without this. If you've got RC planes, spend 11 bucks, buy one of these guys. My servo tester has, I just rubber band an old uh, ESC to the back of it just to give it power because these servo testers, you have to supply four to eight, you know, basically five volts. And so any of the ESCs will have that voltage output and it gets plugged in here. Now, now we're going to put some servos attached to that <clears throat> and plug it in and we'll have the voltage and we'll be able to basically do several things with servos. Hang on, I'll show you what I mean. The first reason I use a servo tester, especially when I'm doing a build, I need to zero all the servos so I can manually adjust the control rods. The servo tester allows me to do that. I plug the servo, the servos into this tester, in this case the ailerons, and I'm going to select to 1500. 1500 is centered. So now I can go through and make all the adjustments I need to during my build. Sometimes I buy servos, sometimes I just want to test out a servo uh, or maybe work it in. Some people would say, let it run 10 minutes. This has the capabilities of hitting that button and it just cycles through the servos, full deflection, and it'll just keep running. I could make it run for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it might be. Careful, some servos don't like to be run at the full amount, but one of the capabilities of these servo testers is just that. You can run your servos and just kind of burn them in, as someone might say. Number three reason to have this servo tester. One of my servos is acting up, or is it? I can test the connections to see if my servo is working, or maybe there's a connection in the line. So by having them connected to this, I can go into a manual mode and turn them. So I can tell if the servos are working or maybe it's a connection. And I've done that where I've checked it right here from let's say the Y cable and it doesn't work. I remove the Y cable and it works. Now you validated that that's your problem. Number four, test the direction of the motor. Are these set up properly? These uh, wires right there, before I put it into my plane and have everything plugged up, and these are deep into the bowels of the cowling, is the motor spinning the right way? By attaching it to my servo tester with the speed controller that I plan on using, I can basically go through that process and rotate it, and then I can tell, uh-oh, that's going the wrong way. Flip two of these. through let's see hey how about that now it's going the right way easy way to test motor direction number five testing retracts let's say this goes through a sequencer or a blue box or something retracts aren't working right plug them in here and guess what i can start going through the sequence sometimes you got to move the dial back and forth a couple times before it'll reset itself and work properly but this is a great way to troubleshoot to see what the problems are and if the retracts are working. Number six, all these tests, retracts, servos, such. If you go to a swap meet and you don't bring something like this along to test the plane you're about to buy, sure, the owner says it works great. He hadn't flown it in three years. He's not lying to you. He just doesn't know. This right here in your pocket gives you the tools you need so you can test to make sure the plane isn't going to be a big surprise when you get home and start setting it up. So, hope you enjoyed my favorite tool, the servo tester. Again, questions, uh, leave a comment. If you think of another one, more than six, something else, shoot it in the comments, like, subscribe, all the cool stuff. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.